Welcome to New in the Mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel and I'm going to start the video with these two products. These are ESP32 S2 based TFT display modules and uh, they've been sent in from uh, makerfabs.com. Uh, they have two options when ordering these. You can go with a uh, resistive uh, touchscreen or a capacitive one and I guess you would want to get the uh, capacitive type unless you have a very specific application where it would be difficult to go with the uh, more sensitive capacitive touch like I don't know you want it to be operated with gloves maybe the screen resolution on these is uh, 320 by 480 pixels uh, that's not super high pixel density but decent for most uh, projects and because of the ESP32 S2 on the back which uh, drives these over a parallel interface you can get some high throughput and MakerFabs claims it's even possible to play videos on these and to give you a sense of how fast the screen refresh rate is I have loaded a couple of the provided examples based on the LGFX graphics library and it's clearly visible that we're getting some pretty high refresh rate on these I mean uh, just look at how this smooth the motion is on all of these icons there's like 50 objects on the right screen and we're getting more than 60 frames per second as uh, shown by that uh, counter and since we have that uh, powerful ESP32 S2 on the back uh, with a Wi-Fi connection uh, it's, e it's easy to think of various projects uh, where you might uh, make use of these for example I could see this being used as a wall thermostat interface for home assistant it could be having some touch buttons for you know setting the uh, temperature but it also function as an always on display showing you some sensor data grabbed over MQTT from the home assistant server so this is a uh, really nice package for those looking to integrate a TFT display into their next project it has everything you could need uh, it, it even provides you with some spare IO uh, you get a native USB connection to the ESP32 S2 and a, uh, a second USB to serial uh, connection for uploading firmware you have a speaker output you have the micro SD card slot where you can load uh, various stuff uh, the schematic and board files are provided on github so really all you have to do is write some firmware and maybe 3d print an enclosure and uh, just uh, get started on using these the product sells for about $45 for the uh, capacitive touch model and I believe three or four dollars less for the resistive touch one uh, and that's not bad at all considering the amount of uh, features that you get with one of these certainly something to consider for your next project and I will place some links to this in the description below the video so check them out the sponsor of this video PCBWay.com is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times but you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay they also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing, machining various parts so you can have an entire prototype built using their services check out their website linked below next up I have an interesting little DC motor with gear reduction uh, judging by the weight of this motor I would assume we have plastic gears inside here uh, but they reduce the total RPM to just 14 rotations per minute at 12 volts and the listing on AliExpress contain the keyword brushless but uh, given the two wire uh, input and uh, just the looks of this uh, motor I would say it's uh, safe to assume this is a little brushed DC motor the specs of the motor coat uh, 1.2 kilogram per centimeter so not a lot of force but uh, I figured it could be useful to have one of these around for example I'm working on a personal project where I would like to automate the water um, intake valve for my apartment and you could buy those electrically actuated solenoid valves but I would like to avoid uh, doing plumbing work to replacing the original uh, tap so that means keeping the standard manual valve and driving it with uh, an added servo and that is a work in progress I've had some partial success with using a servo I already had around but um, need I need some more torque uh, I ordered another servo so the video on that topic is coming soon after I get the new servo motor until then you will find the link to this in the description below next up I got another set of these 10 pin 1.27 millimeter pitch flat ribbon cable extensions 
and these uh, can be used for JTAG in particular they work well with my JTAG adapter board which at the moment is out of stock uh, someone just ordered all of the available stock uh, from my Tindy store I'm not sure if I should make more of those or not it's not a very popular product uh, all of the available units just sat there for months with no request until someone just decided to order all of them so yeah I'll have to think about that and decide if I should build more units or not next up here is something that I guess most of my uh, viewers uh, can relate to uh, it doesn't matter how many screw types you have in your assortment kits there's always that one size that you do not have available for your current project and I get this a lot I do have a fair selection of m3 screw sizes shown here different lengths different types of head screw and yet I still have from time to time a need for yet another length or type of head screw hence why uh, I ordered these uh, which are 14 millimeters in length uh, these are uh, related to the servo valve project mentioned earlier where I had to 3D print some uh, custom brackets and the resulting spacing on those created the uh, need uh, for these um, 14 millimeter long screws and I tend to prefer the hex socket uh, type of uh, uh, screw head just because uh, I can get in there with an allen key or even a screwdriver adapter and I, I can get much more torque than with the uh, standard uh, Phillips type of head screw next up I got another set of IR sensors and the part number on these is uh, CNY70 which will bring up a v-shape data sheet if you google for it I don't think these are original v-shape parts maybe just a clone but given how simple this uh, technology is uh, they are likely to function very similar to the original part maybe just a higher current draw I've shown some IR sensors in my previous mailbag as well uh, these have an even smaller working distance or uh, should I say sensing distance which makes them ideal for various encoder disk type of applications where you would want to sense something which sits just one millimeter or half a millimeter away from the sensor same as before these have both the uh, RX and the uh, TX um, optics built into this small plastic assembly uh, so this makes them very convenient and cheap to integrate into such a project the wavelength on the emitter is 950 nanometers and there is a daylight blocking filter on the receiving and photo transistor next up I got a couple of these uh, cheap 6.35 millimeter mono audio jacks and these are typically uh, you know used for uh, guitar or microphone connections and I was working on a project recently where I had uh, 6.35 millimeter jacks I didn't have any of these uh, connectors so for running some tests connecting a signal generator and the oscilloscope I had to solder wires to that PCB and that's when I decided to order these just to keep around in case I ever need to interface with such a connection again uh, I could create some custom wiring which would make uh, my life easier link for these as usual will be placed in the description below so do check them out next up I got more of these uh, right angle through hole mounted uh, tactile switches these can be very useful when you need the tactile switch to stick out 90 degrees from the PCB through an enclosure side panel for example I'm using these on my ESP32 based electronic valve controller for underfloor heating that is a board that you can find listed on my Tindy store but I figured I'd get more of these uh, as they can be handy in uh, other projects as well next up I have a few different models of these uh, short USB extension leads uh, so the first one is some generic AliExpress model with no obvious uh, branding on them uh, it's 25 centimeters long uh, these are USB 3.0 extension leads and the end plugs have this metal shell the wire uh, is uh, braided so overall they feel decent quality but what matters the most is the copper inside and there is no easy way to tell how good that is without destroying these and in any case I would not expect more than just okay or average quality given the cost I paid for one of these and how thin the uh, cable seems to be now if you decide to order these just you know expect USB 2.0 speeds as guaranteed and everything above as a bonus next up I have another, another set of these but from Ugreen which uh, in my experience uh, with this brand seems to be of higher quality better than average uh, here I have an uh, USB 2.0 extension 
and uh, an USB 3.0 extension. Uh, these are uh, 0.5 meter long and the cable on these definitely feels of higher quality. It feels soft, it feels thick and I would actually trust these to achieve USB 3 speeds. Now just look at the thickness difference between the U-Green cable on the right and the no-name uh, braided cable on the left. The cost of the U-Green model is also twice that of the previous no-name model. So if cost is any indication of quality, you, you should expect uh, higher quality from U-Green. So ultimately, if USB 2.0 is okay, you can maybe go with one of the cheap ones. If USB 3.0 is what you need, then I would probably go with the U-Green brand uh, as it definitely feels like it's higher quality. There are many use cases for these and the most basic one being extending some USB cord, but obviously extending it with just uh, 25 centimeters wouldn't help you much. But my plan is to use these to extend a Zigbee USB dongle that actually plugs directly into a Raspberry Pi at the moment. I want to extend that away from the Raspberry Pi for better mechanical handling and better RF performance. And another one of these I will keep plugged into the back of my TV, which is wall mounted. And I don't know what is happening with these TV manufacturers, but they never seem to think that the unit might end up wall mounted and their USB ports are so deep uh, on the back of the TV, far away from the edge of the unit, which makes it hard to access if you're trying to plug in some USB thumb drive. So by keeping one of these extensions plugged in and dangling below, I can access that USB port more easily from the bottom of the unit. Next up, I got myself some 24AWG and 26AWG two-wire PVC cable. And this is uh, something that I plan to use for powering some LED tape. Uh, it's the usual fairly average quality cable PVC insulation, which feels kind of hard. Uh, it might do the job just fine, but certainly doesn't feel like uh, some uh, good uh, quality cabling. I've stripped some of the uh, insulation away on, on these so that we can take a closer look at the strands of copper. And uh, I'm also going to do a flame test just to kind of figure out if there is copper inside of these or not. So it seems like the 24AWG1 has a bit more copper than the 26AWG1, which doesn't inspire a lot of uh, confidence. Uh, I mean, the strands on the uh, 24AWG kind of stayed intact and glowed red, uh, even though they were subject to the same temperature. If you know of a source where to get similar cable, but of higher quality without breaking the bank, let me know in the comments below. I would mainly be looking at getting uh, more copper, better copper in terms of purity and maybe just some more flexible insulation. Next up, I got myself a set of these miniaturized caster wheels with the built-in brake or lock system. And up until this point, I just didn't see these available in the local hardware shops, at least not in this small size. Uh, but as it turns out, just after ordering these from AliExpress, I started seeing these everywhere, especially in the local hardware shops. And I guess that can happen because the brain is now set up in a way that it would catch these on, on the shelves as opposed to previously just ignoring them. So as a heads up, these might be available at your local hardware shop for a similar cost as to ordering them from AliExpress. The plan was to install these on uh, a DIY aluminum uh, profile built rack that I could move around the lab based on my needs. It could host some test instruments, it could have a couple of drawers, but recent times have raised the cost for aluminum profiles a lot, so such a build becomes expensive very rapidly. I've also looked around for these uh, wheel-based metal racks for test instruments, but I just can't find any on the local market. If you live in the US, for example, there are a bunch available on eBay. Uh, these are old used instrument racks and they can be pretty useful in the labs. So uh, consider getting one of those. Anyway, my project is on hold for now due to aluminum profile cost. Uh, it's just too expensive to build such a rack at the moment. Next up, I have a couple of these very small OLED screens. 
ITC interface 0.9 inch in size 128 by 32 pixels and this can be a very useful way of showing uh, limited information on a very compact sensor node. These types of OLED screens are well supported by Thasmota or ESP Home or even various Arduino libraries so if you're building something based on these platforms and would like a small screen to show some information to the user this can be a great option. I have plenty of other OLED screens type of modules in my stash but I was missing this smaller rectangular shaped ones so I decided to get a few. Same as always links for these are in the description below. And the last item in today's video is this water level sensor which seems like it's designed for industrial application. Uh, it has these uh, temperature resistant uh, glass fiber braided wires going through the uh, sensor connection and this is like an on off uh, floating type of switch. You have this uh, moving part on the shaft uh, which is going to be triggering the uh, sensor connection inside. It's like an on off uh, switch inside so for correct operation you'd have to install this vertical inside uh, a uh, tank that you plan to measure and when this floating part travels a certain distance up this shaft the switch is activated and as shown here by the multimeter which is connected to the output uh, it just closes that switch when the part travels all the way to the top. So using this you can't really sense the actual level of the liquid inside the tank but you can determine that the level has reached you know a certain top point with some degree of error because I'm not sure about the repeatability of this sensor but given an industrial application you know sensing the level in a, in a big storage tank where you just need to detect when it's full it's likely not going to be that critical uh, if this guy is just a couple of percentage out. Now the good thing about this is that it can operate up to 125 degrees celsius and it can even switch mains voltage on, on that sensor input which is basically a switch and I wonder if this is like a read magnetic switch inside. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch. Let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of the items shown in this video. Same as always there will be links for all of the products in the description below so do check them out. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as one dollar per month or you can simply hit that like button. It's free but it helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.